Good morning. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Now I can't see your face. So if possible, a little more light. Then I can see among the some audience may go to sleep or not. <laughs> <laughs> if the audience remain alert, then my enthusiasm come. Audience showing boring. Then my also, I myself also boring. <laughs> this way. <laughs> I think one old friend. Yes. Right, 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 right. Seventy-three. Yeah. Oh. You made my mother. Right, right. <laughs> Right, right, right. His Holiness is a much better presenter than I am. <laughs> Welcome. The Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Hej allihop, varmt välkomna hit till denna fantastiska förmiddag. Är ni spända? Det förstår jag. Uh, very welcome, all of you. I'm very proud of being uh, the presenter here today. My name is Katja Sarström. And first of all, let us welcome our main guest here today. His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. And uh, please welcome our amazing artist this uh, morning, Lisa Ekdal or Richard Söderberg. <clears throat> His Holiness will give a statement here today that we really need to listen more to and learn a lot about these days the art of happiness of peace. His Holiness the Dalai Lama comes to Sweden this time to join in in the IM's 80 years anniversary. IM was find, founded by Britta Holmström in 1938 as a reaction yeah, against you. violence. Yes, yes. What do you need? No, 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 no. I'm just interested. <laughs> Not your business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's hot this in one. here. That one is hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the important work uh, that EM has been doing since 38 is uh, working with, with um, reactions against violence, as I said, racism and uh, oppression in the events that eventually led to World War II. And they started to working with refugees in Europe, but uh, eventually activities spread outside Europe. And in the 60s, collaboration started with His Holiness and all those refugees that arrived from Tibet to India and Nepal. So uh, since the 1960s, I am and His Holiness have been working together for a better quality of the Tibetan people. <laughs> An amazing work they're doing. I think we're ready for some beautiful music. So let's listen to a couple of songs by Lisa and Rickard. You say we have nothing in common. Violence 
There's just one love coming from that one place. There's just one face, and it's your face. There's just one love going to that one place. There's just Jag ville se mirakel och höra ord som föder liv. Bli buren av en styrka 
Som bara växer när vi anat vårt motiv. Stadig ljus i ett land utan namn. Och så när allt förändras Och tiden inte längre finns Då ser jag oss tillsammans Och då är resan slut i det enda Som vi minns stadig land utan namn och ge mig liv där allting föds på nytt och stadig ljus i ett land Ge mig liv där allting är fött på nytt. Tack så hemskt mycket. Det är ju vanvästigt bra det där. Måste sägas. Very beautiful music. Now please listen to the important words of His Holiness. Please, more light. No, okay. Hmm. Brothers and sisters. We are same, same human being. Swedish, Tibetan, secondary level differences. Basically, we are same human being. Mentally, emotionally, physically, we are the same. Now, important thing is, we everybody want happy life. Even animals, insects, birds, we usually call sentient being, sentient being who have the feeling of pains and pleasure, then by nature, all want pleasant life, happy life, do not want suffering. That's our basic right. Then, in the terms of a human being, seven billion human beings on this planet, we all want happy life. But besides suffering out of 
nature disaster, including global warming, many problems, violence, cheating, bully, and due to huge gap, rich and poor, poor people, their daily requirement, food, even sometimes difficult. This problem, this suffering, is our own creation. So now, uh, since this problem, our own creation, so we also have the responsibility how to reduce this as a problem, this suffering. So, as a one human being. And we basically social animal. So each individual's life or happiness depends on the community. No matter how individual, very powerful. Uh, I think even if, if may I tease you <laughs> Your physical, very strong. Hmm? And your voice, very strong. But if you remain in a city, in a place, just one single person, lonely, you can't survive. That's human nature. Because we are social animals. Each individual's as the life depends on the society and the community. So therefore, from selfish viewpoint, we have to take care of others' well-being. So therefore, since we are social animals, everyone wants a happy life. So we need a sense of responsibility. Look after them, helping them, at least you see, not harming them. We need friend. Friendship among social animals. Friendship is very important. A friendship entirely based on trust. Without trust, how can you develop genuine friends? So trust come if you show other serious concerns their well-being, then trust come. So from selfish viewpoint, we need sense of concern of others' well-being. So sometimes we feel uh, I'm quite independent. Everything, I can manage everything by myself, not depend on the, social, on the society. That's short-sighted and ignorant. So we are basic, our nature is social animal. And then on top of that, now scientists, uh, some scientists say, basic human nature is more compassionate. One occasion, uh, I think over 30 years, I have serious discussion with scientists, mainly uh, ecologists, because of cosmology, then uh, neurobiology, then physics, particularly quantum physics, then uh, psychology. So uh, last or now, uh, more than 30 years, uh, occasionally serious discussion with scientists. So one occasion, uh, one scientist is show us one picture. He made that because of the film. One uh, six month old child. Language not yet developed. So human communication not yet developed. So at that time, I think influence from outside very less. So basic human nature. Uh, very much so alive. So that child, 
to that child show one a sort of picture, one motion picture. Oh, God, I mean, Oh, oh. So one little picture, uh, cartoon, cartoon. You see, uh, one cartoon, two children. Uh, one, one child, you see, pushing one ball. Because uh, upper hand, sorry, upper. Uh, oh. And then uh, another child helping him, pushing together. When that six month old child seeing that, smiling, express has a joyful, joyfulness. Then next, same cartoon, two, two children. One, one child try to push him, that ball. Another child also the great obstacle. Uh, so when that sort of sh- cartoon showing, seeing by that uh, six month old child, the child uh, itself showing very negative attitude. So they concluded basic human nature is more compassionate. Then, according to our own sort of experience, more compassionate mind here, uh, your physical health much better. Logically, now, Buddhist psychology clearly mentioned, explained, now, too much self-centered attitude, then naturally, fear, Look this side. Oh, he or she might take advantage of me. Uh, this also. So trust is showing them genuine sort of human warmth. Then that automatically destroy suspicion, distrust. That bring full confidence. And then, you see, you can carry your life honestly, truthfully. That creates a very positive atmosphere. Too much self-centered attitude. Me, 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 me. Then Lily sort of, you always then mentally remain distanced from other. So since you, we are social animal, your life depends on other. So the person, due to self-centered attitude, a little bit distance from other, and then deep inside, some kind of lonely feeling. That person will not have you one. So then, obviously, seven billion human beings all come from their mother, all receive the maximum affection from their mother. Without that, they can't survive. So I usually describe uh, my sort of real teacher of compassion or love is my mother. My mother, very kind sort of person. I think we never saw our mother's angry face. Always smile, 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 helping. Not only taking care of her own children, but also you see the uh, other neighbors of the children. She always helping them. Always share. Whatever she gets something, share with them. So I consider my real teacher of compassion, uh, my mother. So we, everybody come from our mother. Isn't it? Huh? So if uh, some sort of stories, according to some ancient Indian sort of Asite Kasoda, saying some great lama, great teacher, uh, come from lotus. So sometimes I jokingly telling, uh, express, oh, those great sort of teacher come from lotus, they may have more compassion towards 
lotus rather than human being. <laughs> so therefore, oh, that's human nature. Compassionate. And then, more compassionate heart uh, keep here. That person much happier. According to my own little experience, so I always consider we are the same. I never consider I am spe- I am Dalai Lama, as you introduce me, f- grade fourteen to Dalai Lama. <laughs> I never consider I am something special. You Nothing, are. same. So is it that? Uh, so also the mental ed- mental attitude, really, because of the liberate myself. If I too much emphasis, I am something special. Then you will be low. You will isolate. You will, in deep sight, deep insight, you will uh, have the sort of feeling of loneliness. So therefore, according to my own experience, you see, uh, from early morning when I, you see, say any when I, when I met any person, including police. Uh, I just express hello, and then smile, and then sometimes joking, <laughs> like that. So I think sometimes uh, uh, it's one one occasion. Uh, I think a few months ago in Delhi, one hotel in Delhi, as my usual practice uh, before my breakfast, about uh, six six o'clock. Uh, I went outside my room and some police there and then say hello. Uh, then uh, I asked I asked them what do you think, what do you, what do you think my age? They say oh about 70. Then I told no my age uh, uh, then, then I think uh, 83 I mentioned my age, 83. They're surprised. Then also, you see, I show my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth. Very good. <laughs> then, then I teach them. Look, my lips quite red. <laughs> Isn't it? Look, something like lipstick. So, so I, I show them. Then, <laughs> the, all the police laughing <laughs> like that yeah same <laughs> so that really they also used to get some sort of at least some pleasant moment and myself also so whenever I met something oh same human brother human sister no differences and on top of that my daily practice is entire sentient being is dearest to me. And then 70, well, 7 billion of human beings is truly our brothers, sisters. So that mental attitude really, you see, creates inner peace, self-confidence. So since this is so there was a certain sort of, sort of quality of social animal. So we all have you see, that uh, potential and we can practice that. Irrespective of whether believer or non-believer. Believe in this religion or that religion. That is secondary. Basically we are the same human being. So that's why I always say start talk. My talk start brother, sisters. I truly think that. Too much problem. Our own created problem. That's too much emphasis on secondary level of differences. Different nationality, different religion, different race, within the same way, uh, different class, some uh, sort of richer, some poorer, educated, uneducated, with too much sort of emphasis on secondary level of differences. That's the source of problem. So, the only sort of, of the countermeasure is deeper, go deeper 
we are same human being. That's very important. So no exception, Swedish. <laughs> we are same. <laughs> so uh, like that. So therefore, mm, one of my commitment is everywhere. Whenever I open my mouth, I always is telling this inner value in order to achieve happy individual. And then second, my commitment is try to promote religious harmony. It is unthinkable. In the name of different religious faith, killing each other. This very moment, we are peaceful. But same planet, same human being, and Syria and some Arab countries killing each other due to different faith. And in many cases, very unfortunate, the same Muslim believe Allah, Quran, daily five prayers. They all do. But little sort of differences the name of Shia and Sunni killing each other. Unthinkable. And that things happen. Oh, in news to see carry these things and feel very sad. The different religious tradition, the source of inspiration. Now that also now divide. Uh, human brothers, sisters, and the killing. So I'm telling my Indian friend among the Muslims, among my friends, some Muslims, I'm telling them, India, Indian Muslim, I never heard problem between Shia and Sunni. And in India, religious tolerance is really remarkable. So now Indian Muslim, should take some sort of effort. Whether achieve or not, that's a different matter. But should take some sort of effort. So now, uh, end of this year, some national level, some Muslim, uh, some gathering to discuss how to reduce the amount of Muslim community between Shia and Sunni killing each other, how to reduce that. And India's next neighbor is Afghanistan, then Pakistan also. And then India, generally, the Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Jews, generally, very good harmony. So religious harmony is possible. India, over one billion populated nation, a lot of problem, but as far as religious harmony is concerned, I think excellent, really example. So, they are correct, right? So, so it is really very, very sad. The human being, another human being, one human being uh, sort of suffer due to other human being. So, so we truly, and then according to Christian belief, we all a creation of God. God as our Father. God, everybody say, God is infinite love. So our Father, like infinite love. So we all, seven million human beings, are children of that kind of Father. So therefore, the, if you believe, Creator, then you should uh, consider serving our same brothers, sisters, children of one father, that father, infinite love. If you think that seriously, then it is impossible to kill him among the religious believers. Then other non-believer also, you see, creation of God. Then Buddhism, Jainism, 
different view. And also another very, very ancient Indian, 3,000 year old one in ancient Indian tradition. You see, there's no creator, no God, but rather self-creation, self-discipline. It's important in order to uh, achieve happy individual person, self-discipline, honest, truthful, compassionate. Very good. What is the theme? Theme, my talk. Ah. Oh, then the same. <laughs> so no argument, even animal. We cannot sort of uh, communicate, uh, but it seems clearly they also want happiness. Don't. And dogs, when I show them my smile, ah, <laughs> They have some sort of ability to recognize the person's sort of genuine affection, genuine love. Hmm? Not only just a feeding, but showing your smile. Oh, then dog, their eye, something special. Uh, they cannot smile, but and there's sometimes little sort of uh, noise. <laughs> and then their tail go like that, isn't it? But if your face... Remember on that, their tail, go like that. <laughs> they also see nose, okay, others' affection, isn't it? I think only mosquito have that ability or not, still I don't know. <laughs> when I, my mood, good, and then it is quite sure, no malaria, hmm? so germ or because germs were. Uh, so occasionally I give blood to mosquito. <laughs> then, then the mosquito whole body becomes red. And then at the end, few drops from their body, then fly. No sign of appreciation. <laughs> 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 so I don't know whether mosquito have the ability to appreciate or showing sort of affection, other, I don't know. <laughs> like that. So therefore, I think not only we human beings, but even animals. Also, you see, loving kindness, taking care, showing loving kindness, they also very much appreciate. So then, seven million human beings, no question. So that, wherever I go, I always talk these things. This is not nothing, something holy or something sacred. But it is your own sort of benefit. Remain, angry person, you will not get any friend. Compassionate and smile. I myself also. Sometimes the people, some, some of my friends say, laughing Dalai Lama. I always say, laugh and smile, smile. That brings me sort of more wherever I go. As I mentioned earlier, dog, cheating, teasing, smile, immediately create some kind of happy atmosphere. If I remain, oh, holy Dalai Lama, holy Lama. <laughs> I will not that kind of atmosphere, isn't it? Like that. So you, everybody, you see, Remain one happy, smiling face, you get more friend. No matter you are politically powerful and economically very rich, but if you see the too much self-centered attitude, uh, not, not showing affection to other, then Difficult. So easily you can see your neighbor, one neighbor, maybe poor, but in the, in the family, full of love, trust. Then that family, full of compassion, full of sort of uh, warmth, warmth. Even some other visitor come. Oh, in their home, 
something. Oh. The other neighbor may be very rich, but lack of mutual trust. Even family member, some jealousy, some distrust, then that family will not be happy family. And some visitor come as soon as reach in their home. Something cool like that. So, uh, so my brothers and sisters, we say in order to be happy individual, uh, and then a uh, healthy body also very much related with that. Some scientists say anger, too much stress, and <clears throat> fear actually eating our immune system. Other hand, more warm, heart sorrow, because of the feeling there, very helpful to maintain uh, immune system. And so your health, uh, much, 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 much better. So, and then, if may I sort of say, a little teasing, this young, young lady, <laughs> uh, you see, sometimes you see, they, they spend a lot of money for beauty, isn't it? As a, <laughs> co as a cosmetics, sorry. Cosmetics. Uh, cosmetics. A <laughs> hmm? lot of cosmetics, but angry face, nobody loves. <laughs> <laughs> Without cosmetic, oh, and a smile, showing genuine sort of human smile. Oh. Then real beauty uh, come. So one of my, uh, now uh, no longer, uh, one monk official who uh, eventually used to reach India, very trusted, wonderful. Uh, eventually he disrobed. Uh, then uh, I tease him, oh, your wife, not that much attractive. I tease him. Then his answer is physically not much sort of because attractive is very attractive, but inner beauty is wonderful. Then I have nothing to say. <laughs> so so real beauty is inner beauty. Inner beauty is very important. And long lasting marriage also see inner beauty there. Then long lasting or see the marriage happen. Without inner beauty, the superficial sort of beauty, because of that attraction, then marry, and then soon quarrel start, then divorce. And worst thing is with children, with child, and divorce. Very bad, very sad. The child really feel, I think, very, uh, very, very sort of hurt, very much hurt. Like that. So that's the, uh, uh, according to my own experience and also my uh, friends' sort of experience, the ultimate source of happy life, healthy body, and a healthy family, happy family, is this inner value that I want to tell you. Now some questions. Question to me. Now some questions now. Well, I have a question for you. Maybe, did you collect any questions? Let's see if there are some questions for, from oh, the yes. audience. Uh, some question, if you... I think uh, we so have one, one microphone, please. So arrange the microphone. And then? I think we collected some, but can I ask you a question? Yes, yes, yes. Um, we had an election here in Sweden just some oh, yes. days ago, and we didn't see that much happy faces in the politicians, I assure you. Uh, sadly enough... And we had uh, on the agenda, high up on the agenda, refugees and yes. refugee mm -hmm. crisis. What is your view as a refugee yourself about how yes. to deal with this yes. and the fear uh, of refugees? Yes, refugee and economy reason. That's, I think, less important. But refugee really facing danger of their own life or too much discrimination, something like that. 
This is really a serious matter. So provide also shelter is, I think, one of the important human servers today, Kasuda, as a social animal. Other one suffer. Then other one is the morally have the responsibility to help them. Mm. However, uh, I think Europe belongs European. Uh, Arab belongs to Arab people, like that. So therefore, they ultimately, I think they should develop their own country. So they seeking because of the shelter, come here, receive them, helping them, particularly their children, educate them. And then younger one, some training, make because of the, or say the preparation, their own, so the rebuilding their own country. Mm. And also, I think right from the beginning, is to make clear them, you temporary, now we received you, whatever way, helping for you, that's our responsibility. But ultimately, you should rebuild their own country. I think Tibetan refugee, generally, now, about 60 years, so we always think about Tibet, mm -hmm. rebuild Tibet. So similarly, for time being, uh, so it is impossible to rebuild their own country by, their, by, by themselves, then difficult. So take refugee in India, but meantime, training our own culture and, and modern education. Mm. Uh, so when the situation uh, changes, we are ready to rebuild our own country. So, so I think right from the beginning, I think, make clear, both sides, the receiver, you also, you see, for the, because uh, of the provide shelter and facility of education, health and uh, training, then eventually rebuild their own country and those nations who already, as uh, they uh, develop some connection, you provide them the instrument and facility. But how would I, you respond to a person in Sweden, like now in Sweden, that say that we don't have uh, the money for them to be here, we can't, we have, don't have jobs, they, they take our jobs, they take uh, the welfare of Sweden, or of the Swedes. How do you react on that? And what do you say to those people? Then you can't help them. Huh? This is reality. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's the reality? That's the reality. You see, uh, I think we should be realistic. Sometimes altruism reach you see, very far, mm -hmm. but practical level, you see, uh, cannot kasoda, cannot reach way, cannot go that way. Oh, then that's the reality. Nothing. So you, those. Mm, or is the economically more advanced nation, I think should make more money. And then world need more money. So, mm, I think ultimately, uh, as I mentioned earlier, world just one planet. The present situation, northern world rich, southern world and Eastern world, Western world. Basically, we all live this small blue planet. So Easterner, their future depend West. Westerner, their future much depend East. So in global economy, not much differences, different continent, different nation. And then similarly, southern world, northern world. And then on top of that, the climate condition, mm. global warming, 
or very serious matter. After, I think, one century, that means, I think, 22nd century, 23rd century, I think global warming, I think, really uh, create a lot of problems. So, uh, global warming, uh, these no difference of so. different nationality, different country, different religion. So we have to work together. Mm. We have to share each other. So then, practical level, how much you can do is, is you, sh you should think more realistic. If you cannot, uh, then tell them clearly. <laughs> <laughs> now your pocket <laughs> now become empty. We want, we want to help you, mm. but pocket is empty. Then they also uh, understand that. Mm. <laughs> I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure it's empty. Um, we have one in the audience, Pad, 59 years old. Mm. And he likes to know, what do you think, how do you think we should approach hate in society? Hate, yeah. Hate. Hate. Hatred. Hatred. Well, that is short-sighted, narrow-minded. What is the benefit? Hate. Anger. No benefit. As I mentioned earlier, constant anger, hate, fear, stress, eating our immune system. Mm -hmm. So no use. We have this, you see, human brain, it's very unique. I think thousands, thousands different species of mammals on this planet. You see, only human brain is something very unique. So language develop among human beings. Uh, some whales, some kind of their own sort of language, uh, but, but very simple language. Uh, and then also, uh, some birds, there's a few different sort of, or say, uh, voice. When they're about to face some danger, they something different voice. So we can consider their language. And then mother and their children. And the mother uh, about to uh, ache, uh, they are sort of language, something different. So, otherwise, you see, uh, such a sophisticated language, only human being, no other, because of this brain. So this brain, brain, very sophisticated, very useful. At the same time, if our brain, you see the use wrong way, very, very destructive. I think war means mobilized killing. That exists only among human beings, no other animal. Tiger, uh, lions, chit, these very fearful and always so depend on eating meat on other life. But uh, when they really feel hungry and something necessary to survive for survival, then attack. In India, the, I think Hyderabad, the, there are one a zoo within one kasa, churi, ka, fence, one fence. See, one side, some tiger. Same was the zoo, or the other side some deer. When I visited there, uh, I had a little bit of surprise. Or oh, same zoo, no fence. Uh, some tiger, same area, some deer. And I asked concerned people, any danger? Then they, they say, the tiger fat well. Uh, some buffalo meat like that, then they never harm to other animal. 
But then we, human beings, I think greedy, uh, greedy, greedy, and hated. Uh, this sometimes I think we create, I think very constant war we created, human creation. Then that also, you see, if we think uh, more sort of seriously, very constant war is very much related with feudal system. During feudal system, power, few people's hand, because of the king, queen, and then unfortunately sometimes religious leader, they acting like authoritarian. So at least a thousand people's sort of life controlled by them. Then give order, go killing the other side and sacrifice their own life. But if individual soldiers have the freedom to choice, then I don't think they are willing voluntarily sacrifice their own life, but order. So there's a feudal system. So since feudal system is outdated, so very concept of war is outdated, I feel. We are now in democratic sort of system. Democracy is the, our way of life. And the future of the world, humanity, democracy, world belongs to seven billion human beings. And each country belongs to the people, not few leaders like that. I think the best way is democratic system. During election, a little bit sort of, sometimes even a little lie. <laughs> but not, not very serious, but it's a democratic system is the best system. Mm -hmm. Uh, in order to rule the country by the people, for the people. But again, now the modern society, I always was telling, our existing education system is uh, something lacking. Uh, the Western world's modern education is very much oriented about material value. So I often telling in India, ancient Indian knowledge, how to tackle our emotion, how to train uh, in order to bring inner peace. Ancient Indian tradition, such things there. But modern Indian, you see, neglected about these uh, ancient Indian knowledge. So my latest commitment is try to revival of these ancient Indian knowledge, how to tackle our emotion. So these days I usually is telling the hygiene of physical in our education. We teach children hygiene of physical. Now similarly, we need hygiene of emotion that's very important. Mm -hmm. Healthy body, like your body, <laughs> very, very strong. Uh, and the, some painting. <laughs> I think it seems it your, girlfriends, <laughs> your girlfriends. Is so, it your girlfriends? <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, uh, his voice, very strong. But that voice, hmm, strong body with healthy mind, healthy emotion, very useful to the society. If this strong, bo strong voice, you see, uh, use for hatred, for war, mm. then harmful. So therefore, now, the, I think whole world, including India, ancient time, a lot of knowledge how to tackle our emotion. But modern India, uh, the education introduced by British, so more materialistic sort of education. I think about 200 years ago, when the industrialization started in the West. Then, the previously 
mainly education, responsibility about education, monastery or nunnery, they carry main responsibility. Eventually, industrialization, industrialization is come. Then mathematics, all these sort of uh, the, the scientific way, these things, then necessary. So then separate education institution started. So at that time, moral principle, inner value, this carried by church. So quite, uh, quite a balance. Now in modern, now modern, modern days, the real sort of effect from church, from religious sort of belief, comparatively less, less. So the existing separate education institution alone should take responsibility both material value, uh, taking physical, physical sort of health, and meantime, moral principle mm -hmm. and mental health. That also, according to Indian tradition, secular. In the West, secular, sometimes the people get the impression secular means disrespect, religion, distance from religion. But according to Indian tradition, uh, secular means respect all religion and also respect non-believer. Mm -hmm. That is something unique, very good. So therefore, uh, India's sort of way, a secular way, then uh, edu the moral education, according to secular way, then we can include uh, non-believer. Now today's world, out of seven billion, over one billion non-believer. So therefore, uh, these also human brothers, sisters, we must include these non-believer. So some education, even moral education, according the secular way. So then in India, uh, I, all, I often used to tell the Indian, Indian brothers, sisters, India have the ability to combine ancient Indian education about inner world, including emotion, these things, and then modern education can combine. So that also related with the religious belief. In Western nation, Judo Christian background, Judo Christian background, you see, uh, consider importance of prayer to God. Hmm. So training of mind, not much mentioned. Whereas Indian tradition, over 3,000 years, training of mind already developed. So therefore, the <laughs> Uh, ancient Indian tradition now uh, should combine with modern education. Then uh, physical well-being, material development, at the same time a peace of mind and uh, the, you, 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 you can tackle our emotion mm. like that. But it's, if someone sits here today and thinks that I, I don't have a healthy body, mm. I am miserable. If somebody sits here now and listens to you and thinks that I'm miserable, I'm not nice, I have a bad body, I'm not happy, mm. when is it too late? When can you start? Do you I need think to practice that for a long time or is it... Self-confidence, very important. Some people also self-hated very bad. And then you feel I'm useless. Completely demoralized. Mm -hmm. uh, then no basis of further development. So that's very bad. Self-confidence. I'm a human being. I have this human brain. I have all the potential. Uh, even today, at present, I have some sort of wrong things. But you have the ability to change that. Okay. So, the, so I think self-confidence and optimism is very important. Uh, if you see feeling I'm useless and completely pessimistic, pessimistic, it's very dangerous. 
That is, I think, self-destruction. So self-confidence is very important. See, you have the same brain. The one occasion I was in South Africa, you know, a few occasions, and one occasion I visited Suedo, and I visited one family there. Then uh, we just discussed, and then I mentioned, now you, South Africa, you already achieved a democratic constitution, democratic society. So white and black and equal. But now you, black people, you see, should, uh, should develop self-confidence and then work hard to become equal white people, white community, and black people should, because of that, because of that, should make effort, uh, also the ability, same, same level. Then one black person told me, oh, we cannot do that. Our brain is inferior. Mm. When I heard that, I really shocked. Then I told him, no, totally wrong. If we go to brain specialist and ask due to different color, any differences of brain, the, any sort of scientist say no differences. Then I mentioned in our own sort of story, uh, sometimes in uh, uh, some Chinese hardliner, Chinese communist. Of course, Chinese, basically, a cultured people, hardworking, wonderful. Yeah. But some of those narrow-minded hardliner, they consider Tibetan because uh, they're inferior. They are more advanced. Uh, they, uh, sometimes they say that. But the only question is opportunity. When we Tibetan, they consider inferior. When we have the opportunity, sort of equal because of opportunity, then we also can be top. Now in, in Tibet also, some Tibetan student, uh, modern education, these things, they really reach the top. And in India also, you see, we, uh, uh, many Tibetans through education, they seem to become top. I sort of, I sort of explain these things. So you should not think you are uh, the black people, the, because of the mentally or because of the mm. physically brain, brain level, some inferior. That's totally wrong. So you should uh, develop self-confidence and work hard. Then at last, and he, with has a long side way, like that, then he responded to me, yes, now I believe oh, we are equal. Mm. That moment, I feel, oh, at least I change one individual's mind. Mm. I really feel tremendous sort of happiness, joy. So like that, self-confidence, very important. But you should make distinction. Too much because of the proud, because of the proud man. Boba. Ka. Oh, what's it, the pr proud somewhere. Proud, important, mm. but not or is it the something, ka, ka. arrogance? You feel I'm superior, they are lower. That kind of thinking, over self-confidence, dangerous. But self-confidence, very important. So according to Indian tradition, the knowledge about psychology, about emotion, about mind, the very, very detailed sort of the explanation. And there are so many different emotions. Some emotions very useful. Some are very harmful. 
uh, once we know that, then in order to reduce harmful emotion through prayer, through ritual, no help, only through realize the, so the opposite side of emotion, such as anger, very harmful. Then anger through prayer will not go away. So only the compassion, forgiveness, is the counterforce of anger. So pay more attention about the counterforce of anger. Through that way, gradually, uh, anger reduces. Then according to Buddhist psychology, it's quite, how do you say, quite clear. Such as anger, attachment. Now quantum physicists, quantum physicists also now realize, one of my American friend, he's very old. When I first met, his age already 84. I, Aaron Beck, he, not religious minded, uh, he told me uh, he helping those people who much disturbed their mind due to anger. He helping these people. I think at least a few decades. So his conclusion is when anger comes, that angry person uh, seeing someone uh, which they feel angry appears very, very negative. But actually, 90% of that negativeness is the angry person's mental projection. That's now scientists also now say that. The Buddhist psychology clearly mentioned that. So therefore, all destructive emotion based on exaggeration. That exaggeration very much based on appearances, not the reality. So therefore, the, the negative emotion, since based on uh, mental projection, can change, no sound basis. The constructive emotion, such as compassion, thinking, reason, so m more thinking about this reasoning way, uh, it automatically increases because there's a sound basis. So destructive emotion, no sound basis. Constructive emotion, very much based on kasoda, reality. So therefore, uh, we can develop confidence or negative emotion very powerful, but I can reduce that. The positive emotion, at the beginning, a little weak, but through training, 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 reasoning, 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 it can develop. I have one... So now education system, the so-called modern education, should include mm -hmm. about the education about mind, about emotion as a strictly, as a secular way. Do we have any teachers here today? Yes, lovely. Um, I have one question for, from Karina in the audience, 61 years old. She, she's asking, how can you be so optimistic? How can you have that op optimistic approach uh, to the future when the world looks like today, as you mentioned, war and hatred and everything? If situation, including education, uh, at present existence, if go this continuously, then I think trouble no end. Therefore now, we have to, uh, we just complain war, killing, not sufficient. What's the root of this problem? And how to change that? Not through religious belief, but through education. If we make effort, uh, use human intelligence, 
with combination of scientific research. Then, I think at the moment, I think the beginning of the 21st century. I think after 30 years, 20, 30 years, new generation who, who, who received this sort of more complete form of education comes, education, generation who come through that kind of education, then I think world will be uh, more different. That, that kind of world, I cannot see. Uh, my dear friend, the Bishop Tutu, he always teasing me. I also teasing him. And he, <laughs> whenever we met, he always described me, mischievous Dalai Lama. Then I immediately respond, mischievous bishop. <laughs> so we always teasing each other. So uh, one occasion uh, on my, in, uh, on, on my, actually my invitation, you see, he came to Dharmasala in spite of his old age. Uh, and then we, I think three days, we continuously discuss uh, and uh, with teasing, because of teasing, teasing my way, teasing. Then one occasion he mentioned, mm, he as a Christian practitioner, uh, he ready uh, to go to uh, heaven. Dada Lama go something different place. <laughs> so, so strictly speaking, I'm non-believer, Buddhist, no concept of creator, so non-believer. So non-believers, destination, go hell. <laughs> <laughs> so after 20, 30 years, I may be uh, uh, hell, uh, but occasionally so I it is telling people, even uh, I in, in, the, in, in the hell, I can sort of, what's the day, uh, I, I can receive permission go to world watching. What kind of world? If world more compassionate, peaceful, or helping each other instead of humming, then I will report to uh, the health, because of health, health of the, uh, concerned authority. Now, size of health can reduce because human being on the planet, on the world, really becoming, oh, kasota, ka, ka, oh, better with moral principle, more compassionate. If other hand, world still continuously killing each other, killing each other, uh, harming each other, then I will report the uh, uh, hell they should expand. <laughs> <laughs> so like that. So, uh, so therefore, if we make attempt, make effort, start now with vision, then I think the uh, rest of this century, I think, uh, later part of the 21st century, I think it can be more peaceful, more happy world. I cannot see. Mm. As, as I mentioned earlier, we have all this potential. Basic human nature is more compassionate. And our education is a brain, a very brilliant brain, then with combination with scientific finding, then educate people. This is not something holy or something. No, their own physical health as well as mental health and happy family, happy community. Very simple reason, like that. So then, the last question comes from, uh, I can't really spell his name, Mede uh, Kulmo, I think. I'm sorry if you're here. I can't spell, uh, pronounce your name. 50 years. But the question is, when can you go back to Tibet? Mm. When can you go back to Tibet? 
Now, things are changing. Uh, firstly, Tibet, China. You see, uh, over a thousand years, we have a very familiar sort of relations, sometimes bad relations, and sort of or how should they killing each other? Uh, sometimes very happy sort of relation, through, even through marriage. Tibetan emperor married with Chinese princess in the 7th century, and similarly, uh, that kind of, sort of very close relations. So as a neighbor, sometimes fighting. <laughs> Sometimes harmony or friendly. So we are uh, recently, recent years, passing through some difficult period that not permanent, that will change. Uh, China needs Tibet. Tibet also needs China. Like that. So therefore, now the only is it a narrow-minded uh, the Chinese leader, and then it's then difficult to see the, the, the reality. Now, over 70 years, they use various methods to eliminate Tibetan spirit. Killing, torture, brainwash, and give some money. Mm -hmm. Completely fail. Tibetan spirit, you see, we have our own language, our own script. And now, China, historically, Buddhist country, like Tibet. But as far as Buddhist knowledge is concerned, Tibetan, we kept all the Nalanda tradition, the Buddhist knowledge, I think, intact. Now some Chinese professors, some universities sort of teachers who now uh, have some better knowledge about uh, through their research. Now they are uh, expressing Tibetan Buddhism, the na true Nalanda tradition. And that Buddhism is a scientific religion. And some Chinese professors, you see, actually, you see, since they have sort of very much sort of, what's the day, uh, admiration about Tibetan Buddhist tradition. So they also, you see, some, some of them trying to learn Tibetan, like that. So now today, China, I think about four years ago, three, four years ago, when, when Peking University survey how many Buddhists in China, then they mentioned about more than 300 millions. Then they also mentioned Many of these Chinese Buddhists are educated people, they mentioned. Since then, you see, many Chinese friends, now they say Buddhist population in China around, uh, around 400 million. So now China, a communist China, is the, uh, so the biggest number of Buddhists. <laughs> <laughs> During the Cultural Revolution, eliminated because of the thoroughly eliminate. But soon after, Cultural Revolution start, because of end, revival of all spiritual tradition very rapidly, including Christian, like that, and Chinese, Chinese own Taoism, Taoism, like that. And then Buddhism also, very rapidly, sort of revival. So, we are not seeking independence. Historically, we are an independent country. The, according to Chinese history book, 7th century, 8th century, 9th century, uh, there were three empires, Chinese empire, Tibetan empire, Mongol empire. Uh, but uh, we are not seeking independence or separation. Uh, I'm, we are really admire the spirit of the European Union. So, uh, past separate nation, but for common interest, uh, 
we can develop uh, some kind of union. Look, India also, East India, South India, West India, North India, Central India, different language, different script, mm -hmm. but remain in union, immense benefit. Each area, different language, different script, separate, then more difficult. So, and European Union, I always feel if European Union not develop, then last a few decades, I think some killing may take place among the member states. Since European Union start, now at least among the member states, uh, no sort of violence, no war. So therefore, I'm always thinking the spirit of European Union Eventually, you see the uh, uh, Middle East or uh, South America. I think some kind of union. And Africa, firstly, Northern Africa. Then Middle East, some kind of union. I think eventually, if can develop, then I think peace come. Peace will come separate nation, in spite of their economic difficulties, but the emotion feeling, we, 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 then, and Shia and the Sunni, terrible, and Afghanistan, same culture, same nation, but some differences of certain sort of, or the interpretation of Quran, Very silly, very silly, narrow-minded. Look, India, broad-minded. So we, we want to be broad-minded, not narrow-minded. So therefore, since 74, we are not seeking independence. We are very much willing to remain within the people's world with China. Uh, they should respect Tibetan culture. Tibetan language, Tibetan environment, mm. which actually Chinese constitution mentioned these things, then we can help, we can serve millions of Chinese Buddhists. And then, meantime, China, economically very powerful, so they should spend more money for Tibetan material development. Mission benefit. Thank you. Yes. Um, I think we agree on it's been fantastic listening to you. Okay. I almost fainted because I didn't breathe for 45 minutes. <laughs> it's so interesting. <laughs> um, I think someone wants to thank you from I am. Thank you. Hmm? It's been fantastic. Chair of the board, Birte Miller, welcome. And she wants to say thank you to you as well. Okay. Thank you. Yes. You are supposed oh. to come with me. And My practice of compassion <laughs> truly <laughs> brings inner peace, but not much help my knees. <laughs> and I want to thank your holiness oh. for talking to us and sharing with all of us your, your wisdom. And we are so happy to have been friends with you since 1964. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I am this you. sort of society and the old, the, the late mother. Hmm? Yes. Oh, and, yes. And you see Anina. Oh, Anina very, Fenneman, oh, you see? very, very kind. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Uh, yes. So our relation is something very unique and you implementing the value of compassion. We do. And His Holiness, 
we have some very young audience up there. My grandchildren are here because mm. they want to listen to you. Oh. So could you wave to my grandchildren? They are 11 and 15. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> right? We need to take this further oh. to the next generation. So. Okay. You want to do this for, for Kathy? Thank you. Come. Thank you. 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 Now I want to greet this way. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. As a, my friend, please try to become warm-hearted person, then that will be a significant contribution for well-being of seven billion human beings. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have many greetings from Sunan Jamali. Yes. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I usually see Han Sang Da Tenjin. Han Sang. Give me a little sweet steel. Jag vill springa länge När man är vid mitt rätta när Håll mig nära dig och sen Springer vi med svikt i stegen När man är vid mitt rätta när Jag vill springa länge Springa rakt i Kom ihåg vad jag heter Kom ihåg vilka vi är Kom ihåg alla stordåd vi uträttat Glöm aldrig bort hur jag fick dig att bli Ge mig lite svikt i stegen Gör mig lätt av tårarna vi gör Lättat ut av skratt och gråt Här ta min blomma den jag brär Ta de blommor som vi brutit Jag har plockat en bukett Lägg buketten i din säng Säg mitt namn men säg det rätt Kom ihåg vad jag heter Kom ihåg vilka vi är Kom ihåg alla stordåd vi uträttat Glöm aldrig bort hur jag fick det 
ge mig lite svikt i stegen. Nämn mig vid mitt rätta namn. Jag vill springa länge, springa rakt in i din fam. Rakt in i din fam. Rakt in i din fam. Men innan vi avslutar, tack Lisa. Den här fantastiska förmiddagen som jag är så glad att få dela med er. Vilken otroligt fin publik och vilken fin stämning ni har varit här. Och jag är också lite av en fyr på mig själv, det är man inte ofta. Men alltså, jag ska sova i det alltså. Tack så hemskt mycket och glöm inte att fortsätta stödja IMs fantastiska och ihärdiga arbete framöver. Och nu får underbara Rickard... Som ju eh, själva Dalai Lama blev väldigt förtjust i. <laughs> Får man ju säga. Det var inget tvekan om den saken. Får avsluta det här. Tack så hemskt mycket för idag. Johan Reis.